Hi, this is Vicki Gilford Parnell, and I have come to share a dream and I will describe a short vision that I had also. Today is 6 23 24, it's 6 44 p.m. The dream, bear with me, I got a verse to read. The dream is called the hybrids are coming dream. Now, I began having visions around the, I don't know, around 15, 16, 17, off and on seeing an army. And then the dream came. But, and I dreamed, I've been dreaming this same dream from 6 17 24 to 6 23 24. And it is called the Hybrids Are Coming Dream. Before we get into this, though, I want to uh, thank everybody for the donations, prayers gifts brian i have received the microphone and i'm using it lord willing we'll see how it works this is the first time praise the lord before we pray i'm going to read these verses isaiah 5 i think it's 26 27 when i had this dream even before when he was talking to me about hybrids this is the verses he gave me isaiah 5 26 and he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. None shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosed nor the latchet of their shoes be broken. And there's more describing, but, but that is exactly... A good description of what I'm seeing in the hybrids. Alright, so let's pray. Ask Jesus Christ to have his perfect will done in all things. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. But it's also about reaching the lost. We are called to be watchmen. I mean, there are different levels of watchmen. There's some watches on the wall and give the warning, shout the warning. But you are called to warn all about hell. We are all called to be watchmen. And if we are not doing that, if we are not warning people, you may very well find out when you get to heaven or, or when we meet Judgment Day, you have blood in your hands. The Lord has been talking to me very strongly about that. So please, let's pray about everything and reach all we can. And we know from what it says to Jeremiah and Ezekiel and all, you're going to be preaching to people and teaching to people that don't want to hear it. But you don't know who will receive that. So when you're scoffed at, laughed at, made fun of, you know, all these things that they did to Jesus, know that you're on the right track. Don't let it discourage you. Let it encourage you. Because if they made fun of Jesus, if they called him a devil, if they, you know, tried to kill him, if they did all these things, and you're being persecuted very much the same way, that's a good sign. You're doing exactly what heaven, God's heaven, Jesus Christ, Father God, has called you to do. So take heart in that and be encouraged because if they did it to Jesus and they're doing it to you, you're a threat to the kingdom of darkness. All right, let's pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> Our God is so good. He is, he is amazing. We serve an amazing God. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you praise. Holy Spirit, I ask that you lead this sweet, sweet friend. Lead this prayer. And don't let me speak a word that's not from God. Father God, or Jesus Christ, or from you, my friend, in Jesus Christ's name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I ask this to be placed under the barrier of stealth and invisibility. In Jesus Christ's name, until the time you need it revealed. And Lord, I pray in Jesus Christ's name that there be no retaliation, backlash, interference, and such like in all existence known to God, because God exists everywhere. Lord, I thank you for... For the knowledge in simple things, as I, you know what I'm talking about with my electronics. I thank you so much for that. In Jesus Christ's name, and if you lead, I will do, I will explain it later. But I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for stopping me and, and giving me the wisdom of what to do. You are so amazing. I praise you, Jesus Christ. I praise you. And I pray that this prayer would go forth and it would be answered according to your will, Father God. But I'm asking in Jesus Christ's name. So as John 14, 13, and 14 says, it will glorify you and it will be answered by Jesus Christ. So I'm asking in his name and my life is submitted to him. 
to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every weapon, gizmo, gadget, device, technology, computer code, programming, lines of programming. I break you. I reverse you. I send you back in Jesus Christ's name with no ill effects to my, my devices, to myself, to this ministry, to my family, all that pertains to me in Jesus Christ's name to us. And I do that in the authority of Jesus Christ's name. Now, Father God, you have opened my eyes to so many things. Every vex, hex, curse, spell, and such like thing, you are broken. Enchantments, you are broken. Bewitchments and charms and such like. I deprogram you to where that demon is cut by the fire of God that accompanies it. And I command them to not do what they're called to do. Canceling their assignment, wrapping them in everlasting chains, and throwing them into the abyss in Jesus Christ's name. And I pray for grievous torments and heavy burdens in the name of Jesus Christ, but your will be done. And Father God, I do request also that, unless you need otherwise, they be held there. It is the day of judgment till the end of ju the end of the day of judgment when they get thrown into the lake of fire. That is what I'm requesting for all I send to the pit, unless you do, you say otherwise in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, Lord, also, every net, gin, snare, device, everything that's been sent this way, send it back and let them be caught in their own nets and in their own craftiness, Lord. Their own devices will catch them in Jesus Christ's name. And Lord, I bind all demonic hindrances that would try to rear their ugly little head when I get on here. Because I'm praying for you to anoint this and for you the power of God to come down. And that the truth of your words and the truth of all that I speak in your name under the anointing would go forth and would pierce each and every heart in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not about me. I can't do this without your anointing, Jesus Christ, Father God, Holy Spirit. I now refuse to get up here without it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stand. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my everything. You are the Word. You have been revealing to me how that you were the Word. You were not called Jesus Christ in heaven at first. You were called the Word. Hallelujah. What a divine revelation. I give you praise. Now, Lord, I ask you to anoint this and you send this wherever. In Jesus Christ's name, north, south, east, west. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We serve an amazing God. We serve a mighty God, mighty to save. And I'm going to say it again. We serve an unstoppable God, an invincible God. All power of Father God in heaven, Jehovah Elohim, has been placed inside the name, the body the glorified body now of Jesus Christ, who was the Word in heaven. Hallelujah. So we could live victorious through Jesus Christ. I just dropped my shoe. Praise the Lord. <laughs> He's good in all things. Um, what I was, I'm going to explain right quick. I have two phones, even though I don't use them for calling. I have a new phone because I'm having to switch over carriers. But today... I reset factory reset the old one that I was using at the apartment that had been, I'm a, for lack of a better word, infiltrated by the enemy. You know, as soon as I reset it, within two hours later, my new phone's getting, you have to, a mandatory update. And you know, those that go in, if you don't put them in, they're going to go in anyways. So I just stopped and I said, Jesus Christ, this is going to go in anyways. What do you want me to do? And had me pray over it because, yes, it was the, the enemy trying to get into my phone. And what he told me to do, Holy Spirit, leave me exactly how to do. I broke off all charms and bewitchments and such like, all curses and such like. I accepted the, I said, I'm going to accept this, but not come into any agreement, known or unknown, in all existence known to God, with the kingdom of darkness in any way. I pray this does not work. That they have a delusion that it does, if that's what it needs to be, because I pray Second Thessalonians two, um, Second, Th Second Thessalonians two is around verse seven, around there. It talks about strong delusion. He gives them strong delusion. I ask him to send that. But then I was able when I prayed, discerned, and tried the spirits. Excuse me, 
to let the update go in without it harming or allowing any kind of spying. Pray about everything. Do you know even if you sit down to watch a TV show, you are coming into agreement with whoever made that? Seriously, you are. You are coming in agreement to put that into your eyes, into your ears, and into your mind. So if the Lord's leading you to watch something and it's not fully godly, because sometimes I'll have you watch stuff, you need to make sure, but you pray about this and try the spirits and test it. Now, Father God, I'm being led to watch this. In Jesus Christ's name, I do not come into agreement with anything of the kingdom of darkness. I am only here to get what you are having me to get. And that's it. Be wise in all you do. Because there's a hidden agreement attached to everything from the kingdom of darkness. Alright. Enough of that. Take that to Jesus Christ in prayer. And try the spirits. You're going to hear me say that forever. Try the spirits. Test the fruits. Try, try, try in Jesus Christ's name. Alright. 6.22.24 is when I actually started journaling it. Because I wasn't sure. Um, I asked the Lord if... It was ready to go, and he gave it to me one more time last night and said it's ready to go. All right, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've come to write down the dream about the coming hybrids to America and Israel, but also to the UK. Sweet friend, please leave me. Talking to the Holy Spirit. I have had the dream since the 17th of June, but the visions have been coming for a few weeks before this. I'm standing on 1 John 2:27 and John 14:26. I did not put the, include the, the, the visions here, but I was seeing a vision of an army dressed in green, which does have that into the, the dream, but I also saw one dressed totally in black, and it's an elite force, and what, I haven't got it confirmed, but I feel like it's Russia, just so you'll know, and it goes with the dream. It began with my eyes seeing an army. A massive army dressed in dark green military dress uniform. uniforms. They are marching in perfect unity, carrying what looks like some sort of laser-type rifle, solid black in color. There are rows upon rows upon rows, as far as the eyes could see. They march in perfect time with one another. I saw that underneath their feet looks like a massive red carpet. They are marching up, marching on. Their faces are Chinese. I saw now on my left has appeared a red dragon that's flying through the air, then lands on a balcony where many men are standing, again, all Chinese, that I understood were powerful men in the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. None seem afraid of the large flying red dragon with its long tail and long whiskers on its face. Then suddenly, the dragon transforms into the form of a man. The man, Xi Jinping. He watches the soldiers move in perfect sync with each other. Then he laughed out loud, then said, The hybrids are ready and the red carpet has already been laid out for their arrival in America. Then the scene changed. I found myself inside an office, a grand office, with official-looking desk with a monitor on the left. Now, most of you know, I usually have a great detail. All I could see was the desk. There is a light shining down upon it, and the rest of the room is dark. I heard a door open, and then footsteps. I saw a figure of a man in a suit, I could tell, Walk into the lighted area and pull out the rolling chair. He sits down and I saw it's Vladimir Putin. He turns on a screen and presses a button and speaks a few words in Russian I could somehow understand. Send it through, he spoke with the voice of authority. The room is now lit up also by the light from the monitor screen, yet he doesn't turn on any others. Any other additional lighting... I don't think he's aware he's in the dark. He is about to have, I understood, a conversation he once kept secret and hidden from all but the participant of this meeting. Within moments, 
a face appeared on the video monitor that Vladimir Putin is now gazing into intently. It's the face of Xi Jinping. Vladimir speaks first. Xi, I hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. Safety and secrecy is of the utmost importance. This location is secured. As well as mine, Xi Jinping responded, and then he continued. I am to advise you that the schedule has been moved up. Our hybrids are ready before schedule, are to be ready before schedule. I am to offer our assistance to guarantee all the hybrids in your labs will be fully tested, trained, and programmed for the invasion on the American soil. They are to be prepared and finished before you complete those to be sent against Israel and the United Kingdom, Xi Jinping said with a voice of confident authority. Excuse me. Putin responded quickly and a little harsh. Why is it that these orders are coming from you and not the council itself? Xi Jinping appeared not the least bit concerned by Putin's tone of voice in his questioning. My friend, he said smoothly, you could not be interrupted as you were discussing with young Kim Jong-un the final details to cement his allegiance to our causes. Now that we have his loyalty and that of his countries publicly and officially and no longer in secret, we can now focus on compiling the final details of the invasion of America, Israel, and the United Kingdom. Should you require further details, then you may go through any Christ's right-hand man. He has all the plans in detail from the Council of Thirteen and the Hidden Secret Society. Putin's face relaxed and he replied in a softer voice, I see. Ah, yes. The meeting with Kim Jong-un was necessary. I have promised him the South Korean land as part of his compensation besides delivering his long-awaited Christmas gift to the American people. I say they will not like his choice of present, excuse me, seeing how it's armed with nuclear power. Then he laughed softly, finding his own comments amusing. Xi Jinping joined in with the laughter. When it stopped, he began speaking once again. Vladimir Putin, you have been chosen to lead in the, the formation of the coalition to destroy America and bring her to her knees. You have done well. Now let's finish finalizing the last details. We have already offered our hand to aid you with the readiness of repairing your hybrid elites. What about young Kim? Excuse me, so I'm trying to crawl on me. Lord forgive me. In Jesus Christ's name, leave me alone. Sorry about that. You have done well. Now let's finish finalizing the last details. We have already offered our hand to aid you with the readiness of repairing your hybrid elites. What about young Kim, young Kim Jong Un? Um, he has started created that he has started creating with the technology we have supplied him. Did he update you in the meeting of the status of his hybrid army? Putin responded, "Yes, he did. Although his squadrons are smaller in size." than what we have coming. They are just as lethal. They will be ready on time due to the lesser number. We will take you up on your offer, Xi. The facility under the water near, I'm gonna try to say this, Lord gave me the spelling, Kamchatsky, actually there's like a, a, a petrol goes with it. Kamchatsky is where the majority are left still in preparation. In, in preparation status. These are the ones designated for the Americans. At the underwater complex located in the Berintis Sea are those being prepared for the United Kingdom and Israel. The neurochips interfaces are being implanted into these already, but further programming will be needed. I understand, Putin continued. You are supplying the majority that will enter into Canada when she shows her support in getting, giving aid to the Americans. Has this changed? Xi shook his head no and then spoke. We are united in our cause. We 
We shall have our victory over the Americans as well as the Israelis. We will attack and invade the UK and Canada so there will be very little reinforcements of aid and military equipment that can be sent to either one. Yes, Putin acknowledged happily and said, America will fall. We will trample her under our feet and take her people captive. Those we leave alive, Xi Jinping replied with a serious smile. You are right, my friend Putin responded. We shall have little, little difficulty in taking her down and subduing America. They've already from the inside rolled out the red carpet for us, and they are simply waiting for the go signal. We will take down Israel too, he continued. I watched the video monitor closely as Xi Jinping leaned in closer, his face filling the screen. That may not be as easy as you consider it to be, my friend, he said quickly. The Americans have turned from their God that once protected them. This is how we are able to defeat them. It is written in their mystical book called the Word of God. It is also written that Israeli will not be defeated, but their Messiah shall come to their aid. Putin laughed a little uneasy, then replied, The light bearer has assured us this could be changed. And they will fail, and they will fall too. We will follow the plan and will remove the Christian God's son fully out of our one world religion, making him into just another prophet with no power greater than the light bearer or the other dark lords that have empowered one man, their chosen called the Antichrist in Bible fables, to unite and rule over our world with an iron fist of unity. Xi Jinping studied Putin's face closely, then said, I pray to the gods you are right. There has been little evidence of late that the Jesus of the Bible is all-powerful when you observe his so-called followers. Yet with the Dark Lord's true power can be felt and attained. Then all is set, Putin asked Xi Jinping. He replied, Yes, he replied. The suits of invisibility have now been made public, so the Americans know we have them now. Our hybrids do not feel pain, show no emotion. They don't need sleep, nor require much food, if any. They are directly connected to our chosen light bearer, son, and king through the AI neural links and other programming. Their suits can allow them to walk through radiation, fire, snow, and water with very little damage being done. They have incredible strength and their weapons are fresh from the Nephilim facility. Much of what we have acquired is being slowly released to the Americans' intelligence and military, leaving them still loyal to the Dark Lords, the Fallen Ones, but also without any time for them to be prepared for what has been activated and is on its way. Our hybrids from our nations and that of Kim Jong-un's shall demolish all resistance quickly. Putin said. Quick. All resistance quickly. Then Putin put the tips of his fingers together as he leaned back in his chair. All is coming together, he said. It won't be long before the other countries of the coalition shall begin producing their own hybrids. But we don't want them to get too much technology or we might have to crush new resistance to our cause. Agreed, Xi Jinping replied. We will keep our support hidden of Iran and Iraq's nuclear aid. This is what the council has stated. Then we shall continue as we are now. Thank you, Xi Jinping. It's always a pleasure to speak with someone of like-mindedness and intelligence. Xi nodded his head, and the monitor went blank, and the lights went out in the room. And then I awoke. Now I've had visions since the 16th, even before the 16th, of seeing the massive army and the, and and they're just rows upon rows and in perfect sync. And and the black ones, I'm pretty sure, are Russia. There's Russian two two that I saw. Here are the verses. Isaiah 55. Excuse me. In the name of Jesus, Isaiah 5. 26 through 27, Proverbs 21, 29 through 31, Joel 5, 13 through 17, 
Jeremiah 15, 1-14. Proverbs 22, 3. Ezekiel 38 and 39 chapters. Revelation 14, verse 8. Revelation chapter 18 and Jeremiah chapter 51. Please pray about that. Take it to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. You know, we're not promised another day, another breath. We're not promised. Oh, let me know. I'm actually not Lord. We're not promised anything except an eternity, either in heaven or hell. As I said today, I laid down for a nap and I had a dream about bloody hands. And in this dream, the Lord was telling me, all are called to warn. All are called to reach the lost. All are called to share the gift of salvation. Family, friends, workplaces, whoever you are in front of, whoever. Now, not all that you, you speak the gospel to is going to accept it. But there are those that are called to accept it. So as I, I woke up and was praying about the dream, seeing those bloody hands, he took me to Ezekiel 3, where Ezekiel, a righteous man, a prophet of God, a priest that was turned into a prophet, God the anointing, was being told, okay, you're righteous, but if you do not warn, blood will be found on your hands. That goes for all of us. And when you and a lot of people will say, Well, that's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. When you start reading the New Testament in chapter in Acts, and, and for example, Ananias and Sapphira in, in Acts 5, they lied against the Holy Spirit. If Peter had not, if he had just said, Oh, they're newbies, oh, they're new Christians, they didn't know any better. And they walked away. Instead, he called it out. The punishment was severe. God took their lives immediately. But also, it made others aware of the severity of lying against God, lying against the Holy Spirit. God knew their hearts whether they really would, would make it or not. I don't know the whole situation there because I wasn't there. I'm just saying from what we see, everything, the Old Testament is still pertinent today. It is lessons to learn by. But we also know that Jesus Christ taught from the Old Testament. What else would he have taught from? We do not live under the old law of having to sacrifice animals. We live under the law of grace because of what he has done. But we still have the moral laws, the Ten Commandments and those things. Has Jesus Christ even expounded on those? You know, thou shalt not commit adultery. Jesus expounded, if you look upon a woman with lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. He expounded, those are still pertinent today. Ask for Holy Spirit to lead you. We are all called to one. We are all called to reach the lost. In Matthew 28, it talks about the Great Commission, that we are called to teach all nations and, and Mark 16 says to preach preach teach when you are witnessing when you are talking about Jesus Christ and his gift of salvation you are teaching you are making that person aware it applies to every single child of God that has accepted Jesus Christ into their heart so if you are not witnessing if you are not telling people about Jesus Christ if you are not doing what we're called to do you need to start seeking the Lord you need to get a burden on your heart for the lost because we are told to do these things and if you're not doing these things you're in disobedience and that gives the kingdom of darkness a lever in your life pray about these things take the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer because in the end we that have accepted Jesus Christ into our heart and are seeking Him passionately, we know where we, we're going. We're going to be with Jesus Christ, but we should be reaching out for all we can because hell is real. Hell is their final destination. And when I say that, I mean when you get into hell, you're not coming out. You'll be thrown to the lake of fire. There's no escape. 
there's no escape because you're there by your choice. You refuse to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Many are called if you are chosen. You know, I have prayed about that because I've had people say, well, if Jesus Christ already, Lord, do I need to go there? Briefly. I'm not going to go into this very much, he said briefly. We know that Jesus Christ knows who are his. There are, and again, this is another level of this, that verse. Many are called if you are chosen. Those that are chosen in this instance, and in what he was teaching me, are those who are his from the time God created them. Where he says, I, have, I will not lose one of mine. They will not be snatched out of my hand. But the verses repeatedly tell us that he came to, to save the whole world. He has a set amount that's his. But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Those that are called by the Holy Spirit, if they accept Jesus Christ and do their heart, they too shall be saved. Reach all you can while you can. You know, we shout about warnings about judgment coming. And yes, it's terrible. Judgment is here. But are we warning about hell? About the fate of their eternal soul? Let me tell you, hell and the lake of fire is far worse than a, than a nuclear bomb going off. It's eternally torment repeatedly over and over and over. Pray for your lost. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray. Pray for a burden. If you do not have a burden for the lost, ask for one. Because you are called to reach the lost. You are called to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. And you know, when Jesus Christ was praying in John, He mentions Jesus Christ. He did not just say, what chapter was it in, Lord? I don't have my notes. But it, it really stuck out to me because the Lord has keep telling me there's many Christs in this world. Jesus Christ is the one that we're saved under. Even though the kingdom of darkness knows when somebody knows Jesus Christ and when they speak that. But when you're trying the spirits and you're trying, you need to make sure. Where was it, Lord? Yeah, Jesus is praying in verse in chapter 17. And he says in verse 2, And thou hast given him power over all flesh, talking about himself, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Verse 3, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ. He calls it himself, whom thou hast sent. All power is given in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Word. Jesus Christ is the word that was, was with Jesus. The word, Jesus Christ is that word made into flesh that was with Father God in the beginning. Just now put into a fleshly body that is glorified. That is glorified. A fleshly body that had God in it. Please pray about this. Take it to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. Now I myself am going to ask you, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you know 100% that should he come or should you die tonight, you would go with him. If you don't have that total peace, you need to make things right with him. You need to get on your knees and you need to repent and cry out to your God for forgiveness. You need to do it now. You're not promised tomorrow. Please say this prayer with me. Jesus Christ, come into my heart and wash me clean. Please forgive me of all my sins. I accept you into my heart and confess you as my Lord and my Savior, my God, my Redeemer. I confess and believe you are the Son of God, the living God Jehovah, who came to this earth as both God and man. You gave your life freely so I could be free shedding your blood for me. And it's your blood that washes me clean. I confess you before God and man right here, right now. Amen. And it's that simple. The gospel of Jesus Christ is simple. It is so simple that even the, the simplest of minds 
can grasp hold of it. Yet people, because you don't have to do all these, these very hard and elaborate steps, trying to work their way in, refuse to do it. I recommend you get a Bible. I have the KJV, but you pray and ask Holy Spirit. When you get saved, Holy Spirit comes into, into your heart. Father God and Holy Spirit. Because they all reside in Jesus Christ. So ask Him to lead you to which translation and then to teach you in Jesus Christ's name and He will. And understand this, please, in Jesus Christ's name. Even though you have this Bible and you're reading, because this is a, a copy of the Word of God that's given to us, but the original is Jesus Christ forever settled in heaven. So when you ask Holy Spirit to teach you, you'll read this, but the true understanding and the true knowledge and the true meaning will come from heaven because He's not going to allow His children that truly seek and ask be deceived. If you trust and ask. And then you will, as you grow, learn to try the spirits and trust the spirits. In all things, Jesus Christ has made a way for you to make it. Be ye holy as I am holy. He tells us, how do we do that? Well, one, one thing we do is by the word. Sanctify yourself. Sanctify them with the word. The word is truth, Jesus said in, in John 17. 17, 17. You do it. By repenting often. There's some people that say once you're saved you never have to repent again. Then you need to throw out the verse and figure exactly where it is in Proverbs. A just man falls seven times and gets back up. Because that's talking about the righteous. The righteous may fall. And it doesn't say if that's in one day. If that's in a year. If that's a lifetime. A just man falls seven times but gets back up. He gets back up through the power and the strength of Jesus Christ. Repent often. Stay in the Word. Dedicate your time. Spend time with Jesus Christ and Father God. It's going to take surrendering your life fully to them. With all that's coming. Even to survive what all is going on now. Alright, take this to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. Jesus Christ has made a way, but we are also instructed to pray that we are found worthy to escape what's coming. Get in the Word. Get in the Word while you can. Those of you that end up not making it if you're left behind, understand it's by choices you have made. If you're left behind, it's by choices you have made, and those choices will reflect that you've refused to let fully go of the world. And also it can be that you have not been fully told correctly by your pastors or whoever. But again, it is still you who are responsible to seeking out. When you are taught something, you are to search it out and study it. You are to read the Word of God yourself so you know what it says. You can't blame the pastors and all who didn't tell you when you have the ability to pick this up and read it or listen to it. It's your choice whether you make it or not. Alright, pray for one another. I have to say this again. Those of you who have chosen to make yourself my enemy, I forgive you. I do. I, I'm not wasting my time thinking about you in a negative way. I pray for you, lay you for Jesus Christ, and go on to the next prayer. There are many prayers, times I pray about something, pray once, and I, I go to the next one. And then there's other times when I pray and pray until I feel the release. That's like, because right, I was asking once, why is it sometimes I pray once, and then the release is there, and I go on to something else, and don't go back to that. And he took me to Daniel, where Daniel prayed 21 days. Daniel did not have that release, but when, when all the warfare broke through, whether he realized it or not, and he had that release, the angel came to him. There's a spiritual warfare going on. How many of us are still so stuck in this physical world, we don't want to see it? You need to wake up. You need to wake up now. Because the, the spiritual is merging with the physical, and you're going to end up seeing. And a lot of you are going to be in shock, and a lot of you are going to lose your minds when you see. And I'm talking about those 
in general, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about those who have dug their head in the sand when the Lord first started speaking to them, refusing to believe the simple things. When they start seeing the giants and the fake aliens, and they start seeing the hybrids, and they start seeing, I'm just going to say it, the dragons and the, the, the dinosaurs of old coming back. I've seen all that come. You know, they take a little DNA and manipulate it, and God's allowing it as judgment. All right. God bless. Stay under the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember, surely He is coming. Be wise. Be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, it used to say. Not harmless, gentle as a dove. Have the law of kindness in your life, in your mouth, the law of Jesus Christ. But yet, if you're called to admonish, you do it under the leading of the Holy Spirit and Him alone. So that the words will go out and convict. I would rather my words send you out in a huff, but the conviction of the Holy Spirit be upon you or in you from what I've said than to love you with a lie. I, I'm concerned about your soul, each soul. It doesn't matter whether you love me or like me. I am here to warn you. Your eternity is coming. Is It waits for you. You'll either go to heaven or hell by your choice. Choose wisely. God bless.